What's up guys and welcome to Friday Flights. An actual affordable home 10 gigabit networking solution is finally here, but does it actually work? Right around three years ago, Linus Tech Tips posted a tutorial to 10X your networking speed on a budget in which they bought a couple of eBay 10 gigabit networking cards and showed you how to link two PCs together with a 10 gigabit link. Unfortunately, at that time, due to the cost of 10 gigabit switches, using that as a home network solution really wasn't feasible, as you could only link the two PCs together over 10 gig, and you still had to have your Cat5 coming into your existing onboard Ethernet port to get internet access as well as access to the rest of your home network. But hold on a second, Linus. Sorry, I couldn't resist doing that. What if I want that solution to be plug and play? I want to put a 10 gigabit network card into my PC, run a 10 gig cable over to a network switch, and then have that network switch interface with the rest of my home network. There's no funny IP addressing or multiple network cards on a single PC. Is that possible? Well, Mikrotik has a brand new switch that is actually affordable at $110 that promises to do just that. So let's take a look at it. For those who aren't familiar with Mikrotik, and honestly, I'm not surprised if you're not, they're a networking company that's out of Latvia, and they're known for producing a lot of routers and switches with high-end features at pretty reasonable prices. Uh, and I've been using them for years on the enterprise side of things, but this is the first time that I bought one of their devices for my home. And that's simply because of the price to feature set that's inside of this. So this is the switch itself. It is the Mikrotik CRS305-1G-4S plus IN. I wish they had a little bit more creative name for it than just the uh, enterprise standards, but hey, that's what we get. Uh, so this is a five port network switch, unmanaged. It has four SFP plus 10 gigabit network ports, as well as a single RJ45 one gigabit network port with power over ethernet in. So if you have a PoE capable switch or you have a PoE injector, you don't even have to hook this into wall power. Speaking of the wall power, there are two 12 volt inputs on the rear, so you can have redundant power input options on this switch. Around the side, we have our activity indicators and our power indicator. So that's about it. It's a pretty simple device, but the speeds that I've been getting out of this this last week have been pretty incredible. So let's go ahead and walk through what you actually need to get this plugged into your home network and what it will cost you in the end. Much like that line of Tech Tips video, I also scoured eBay, although these are now available on Amazon if you'd rather do that. Uh, this is a Mellanox Connect X2 SFP Plus network card for your PC. It uses an 8X PCIe lane, and uh, it's actually pretty affordable. This was only about $20 or I think $35 if you buy them in a pair. Now, there are a couple different methods of connecting this to this. As you can tell, this isn't just a standard RJ45 network cable. I'm gonna go over the four different methods that you can possibly use in a home situation, and we'll kind of go over pros and cons of each. The first method I'm gonna show you is by far the most cost-effective and best for short distances. That is three to 15 or 20 feet. And that's using a DAC or a direct attach copper SFP plus cable. Do note, an SFP cable will not work, so make sure you're buying the right thing. So this, as I drop it, Hey, this is the Linus Tech Tips video. So this three foot video, <laughs> so this three foot cable cost me about $13 on Amazon. Again, link down in the video description. I also got a nine foot cable for I think $18. So pretty reasonable for the distances we're running. Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind when buying these cables is the branding that's on them. This particular cable is for Cisco devices. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different brandings that are out there. There's Cisco, there's Aruba, there's HP, there's Intel, there's Broadcom, there's Ubiquity. Which ones do you buy? Well. These devices tended not to care which branding was on the the, uh, the cable, although some network devices will care what the branding is and won't work with other branded cables. For instance, Intel network cards sometimes only work with Intel branded cables. So that is an issue you may run into. Your mileage may vary, but for these two particular devices, Cisco and Ubiquity worked the best for me. So that covers my desktop PCs, but what about the server in the closet? That's the whole point of doing 10 gigabit networking in my home, and that's more than 20 feet away. Well, for that, we're gonna run fiber optic. Now there's two different types of fiber optic connections. We're only gonna worry about multi-mode fiber optic connections, which is 850 nanometer wavelength. There's also a 1330 nanometer wavelength. That's single mode optics. You really don't need to worry about that unless you're doing like building to building connections. And even then, unless you're spanning multiple miles, don't worry about it. Multi-mode is what you want for home use because it's a lot less expensive. This right here is an SFP plus multi-mode optic and it plugs into the switch just the same as the DAC cables do. It's using what's called an LC fiber optic connector. And again, links down in the video description for the exact cable that you need. Just make sure you get an LC to LC multi-mode optic cable because the cables are different themselves as well. So this is what the LC connector looks like. It plugs into the switch just like that. 
and we're ready to power on and start getting all that 10 gigabit goodness. So let's see how well this thing works. And about an hour later, I'm editing my video and I realized I forgot to mention what the fourth type of SFP Plus connection was. And you can actually get an RJ45 10 gigabit adapter, but I don't recommend doing it. Two reasons. Number one is the RJ45 to SFP Plus adapter is about $40 and up depending on what model you need. And unless you need to connect to a 10 gigabit RJ45 device, you're really not saving any money over a DAC or a multi-mode fiber optic run. The other reason is because it's very, very cable dependent. Cat5e will not actually run 10 gigabit signal. You can only get one gig out of a Cat5e. Cat6, you can only get it up to about 25 or 30 feet. You really need to go with a Cat6a cable, which is almost as expensive as the fiber optic cable. So I really don't recommend that connector simply just from an economic standpoint. It's much more cost effective in this home environment to run DAC or multi-mode fiber optics. So over my left shoulder here, you can see I've got my Microtech switch with the DAC cable going haphazardly up into my workstation and that fiber optic cable dripping down on the ground and heading over to my server rack. And I'll clean all that up later. Okay, so we're very, very close. One thing you're gonna run into when doing high-speed networking like this is you're gonna run into bottlenecks that you didn't expect. Now, I bet you didn't expect the bottleneck in a 10 gigabit network to be the right speed on the NVMe drive in my workstation, did you? <laughs> However, that seems to be about 650 megabytes per second. But when going the other way, the read speed on that drive is more than enough to feed the server and I'm getting the full 1.05 gigabytes per second that I should be seeing over that link. The best part of this setup is there's no mess, there's no fuss, there's no configurations, there's no tricking windows and descending files that fast, there's no weird configurations on the server, there's no static IP addressing, there's no weird routing or IP table work. It's all literally just plug and play. This works just like your home router and a home switch would, only it's 10 gigabit instead of one. So if you're looking to hook up two PCs on 10 gigabit networking, no mess, no fuss, plug and play, it's actually less than $200 for this whole setup, including the cards and the cabling and the switch and everything you need to do this. And you can hook up to four PCs or four different network devices up to this via 10 gigabit networking. It's really, really impressive what Microtech has done for this price. Probably the best part about the switch, it's completely fanless. I don't know if you've shopped for 10 gigabit network switches in the past. Usually all of them have some pretty obscenely loud fans because they're meant for network rack installation. They're meant for putting in a closet or, or a network room somewhere that you don't have to listen to them. This is made for desktop. So for less than $200, you can get 10 gigabit networking in your house between multiple PCs. But what do you guys think of this one? Can you see yourself installing a Microtech CRS305-1G-4S plus IN in your home network anytime soon? I should have pulled a Linus and just given this thing a nickname. Anyway, let me know down in the comments below. If you're looking at doing a home network setup like this for yourself, make sure to check out the Amazon affiliate links down in the video description. And as soon as this is available on Amazon, I will certainly be adding an Amazon affiliate link to this. But at the moment, I will link to the website that I bought it from. I don't remember the name of it offhand, but I will also post that down below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. And be sure to follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing so you can keep up with my daily shenanigans. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.